let's talk about New York, New York, because I remember when I first heard that song. And me being a New Yorker, you know, me being a Dog Pound fan, I remember when I first heard it, I thought what you thought. When I first heard it, I was like, this is a tribute to New York. Corrupt. Yeah, dance. man, I was giving it up for New York, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt when I first heard it. But then y'all came to New York to shoot the video. Y'all got shot at. That must have yeah, felt like, crazy for you to do a dedication to New York and have mm. so much love for New York because you love hip-hop so much and come to New York to show the love and New York starts shooting at y'all. So now if I got this right, y'all made the decision to do the video with y'all kicking over the buildings in the video after the video, after the, um, y'all got shot at, right? You damn skip it. Mm. Because it's like, because, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Tyler man. We was, um, we really thought that this record would earn us the respect from New York. All we wanted was the respect from New York. If you get respect from New York in this hip-hop game back then, because nowadays nobody gives a fuck about respect, right? Mm -hmm. They just do anything. No one cares. But back then... New York is the meta. So if you got respect from New York, oh, man, and you not from New York, oh, man, that was just, that was it. Mm -hmm. You made it. You made it. If New York respected you, if New York gave you your props as artists, as an MC, as anything, Oh, cuz you, 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 you're that shit. Mm. So no matter what we did until we earned respect from New York, it was just irrelevant to us mm. personally. We was already selling our records, so we was making the money, but the money yeah. was nothing. What mattered to us mostly was respect in the hip hop community that we tied yeah. on the mic, that we're good, and that we earn the respect of the Mecca. Now, I've heard you speak about Biggie being on the radio and saying, yo, how are we going to let these West Coast dudes shoot a video in Brooklyn and, and feeling like that that has something to do with it. But I want to note that even what you have in those negative experiences, I've also heard you say you live by the code of the street and you took it in stride. Y'all, You, Daz, Snoop, always showed love for Puff. And big, even through a lot of the drama that they were having with Shug and Death Row. And that had to be uncomfortable for y'all. You know, you and Snoop and coming from a Crip side, Shug is coming from a Blood side. Then y'all all supposed to be representing together. And then Snoop goes on Hot 97 and does this interview where he says with Angie Martinez, where he says, well, look, I got love for Puff and Big, right? And so, you know, I want to talk to you Mind, about how you no, felt. Don't mind me laughing. Oh, no, it's all good. I mean, you live through it, so... You know what I'm saying? You got, uh, you got, just taking me back down memory lane. I yeah, remember man. Memory, all that. But I wouldn't. We how didn't you felt. give a fuck. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We didn't give a fuck. Dog's the champ, mm. and dog calls the shots, cause mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. And dog spoke for us all, cause he knew, cause like, look, man, we ain't into this garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they always, Puffy, Biggie, they always showed us that love, right? But remember, we was all young. Mm -hmm. We was all young. Biggie was young. When he got on the radio and said what he said, because he was young. Mm -hmm. And I bet you this much right here, he didn't even realize his power at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. Because what he said sparked his entire city. He didn't understand what he said would spark that whoop wop. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, you know, just letting people know that, hey man, if if it was us out there, they wouldn't go for it. All right, check See, it that's in. a lot. That's power, my nigga. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't go for it, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't saying hurt nobody, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Like, cause those are shot calls. And the bottom line is, I don't know whether Biggie understood his power or not. I give him the benefit of the doubt that he really didn't realize that niggas would dump us and try and really harm us because he always stayed solid with us, him, Puff, all mm. of them. And when we did New York, New York, cause first of all, there was no hook. I just laid the verse. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the original hook went, you ain't all that, something, something, something. You ain't all that. It was Daz. But then when I was going to lay the second verse, Snoopy came in the studio, me and DJ Pooh and Daz. And he came in because he was in his car when he was driving to the studio. As he pulled up, he was playing Melly Mel and Furious Fox. Mm. He was playing New York, New York, big city of dreams. And everything in New York ain't always what it seems. You might mm. get food if you come from out of town, but I'm down by a law and I know my way around too much. Too many people. Too. So he came in singing what he was listening to in the car. Right. And as right. he came in, bam, the door opens his dog. Pooh like, Snoop. And I turned around like, oh, shit. Dad's like, cuz. And dog was like, New York, New York, big city. And the beach playing. Then right. New York ain't always what it seems. You might get, f and then and he said it the Melly Mel way, right? And then DJ mm -hmm. Pooh was like, ooh, that's tight. Hey, that needs to be the hook right there. You should mm -hmm. go lay that. And then dog was like, sis? And he was like, yeah. And then dog said, okay, let me throw some touches to it. And that's when he changed the ending. But I'm from the dog pound. Whoop -wop. That's what it was, because it was hip hop, guys. Yeah. Dog restructured the chorus because DJ Pooh liked the vibe of what he was saying to the beat. We made New York, New York. We got shot at. We went back to Snoop's house. We was down for about a week, week and a half, two weeks. Before Dog, well, about a week. Before Dog just woke up one morning and said, man, fuck that. <laughs> and then that's when he called DJ Pooh because this is what we're going to do. And we started mm -hmm. kicking everything the fuck over. He shoot at us, we survived. Bam! We slapped the game in the ass. And we was just, we was just, what's happening? So, you mm -hmm. know, and then after that, they made LALA, -LA, Tragedy, and uh, Nori, and Capone. And, uh, Prodigy, Prod rest in peace. Prodigy, rest mm -hmm. in peace. And I think Havoc was on there, too. Havoc was on it, too. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then the first bond was when... Um, me and Inga got together. Mm. Okay, that's right. She was and running around with Capone and Noriega at that time. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Inga was in the Brooklyn and New York streets. That's right. And I was a part of her squad: Nori, Capone, mm -hmm. uh, Nas, Az. Oh, one of my favorites because this is my nigga, man, Cormega. Cormega. Good dude. Oh, yeah. Good oh, dude. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The firm and, and, and whole. And then, you know, uh, just with Inga, I got an opportunity to meet all of these people mm -hmm. that, that you know, smashed us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, right, these are some of my very, very good friends, if not beautiful, best friends. Brother. That's yeah, beautiful. isn't that crazy? That's, That's hip hop beautiful. history. What we don't start it. Look at what we don't start it. This the people party. When opportunity to knock it, then young nigga move that door. Get your foot stuck in it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow go with it.